Hi guys, Con here. So in today's video, once again featuring my E39, I'll be talking about a few more features that I did not show in my previous uh, videos of this car thus far. These are features that either uh, due to my shortage of memory slipped my mind or uh, some of them are also features that I have just discovered with this car. So the E39, okay, uh, I've just learned that this car the, the best looking 5 series of all time. This car was designed uh, in the 1990s by a chap called Joji Nagashima. That's right guys, the E39 was designed by a Japanese, all right? And this shows that even back in the 1990s, what a progressive company BMW was at that time, that, uh, that a non-German, a Japanese national, was able to progress through its ranks and was granted the responsibility to lead the design of one of its key products which is the 5 series okay it, the 5 series as we know it's a major product for bmw and with this generation of the 5 series bmw actually trusted its design to a non-german so um another thing about the, the E39, when, as I mentioned in my previous video, right, when I first got this car, I was given two sets of keys and looking at the condition of the keys, I noticed that one set was, def was, uh, was definitely used way more often than the other and the co first concern that crossed my mind was A, would I have to worry about the battery of this remote? And it turns out that I don't have to because you start the car the car is actually charging your key fob on the move. So there is actually no need to worry about your, your, your remote running out of battery because every time when you get into the car, you drive, the car is charging the battery on the move. So in fact, on the owner's handbook, it actually advises you, right? Um, if you find that any one of your remotes okay, have, been, uh, have not been used for too long okay, and then the battery is dying, just start the car, drive off, take the car, on, use, use the, 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 the drain key, start the car and go for a long drive. So as, as the car is moving, the battery will charge. Now you notice that on the door pillars, okay, the, these chrome surrounds, on the door pillars. Now, uh, these chrome surrounds are present on all E39s uh, that, did, that are not M Sport spec. So, if you see an E39 out there with M Sport body kit, M Sport bumpers, and rims, right, and you see these chrome lines, it means that this car did not leave the factory as an M Sport car, it was converted to M Sport uh, appearance by its owner. Nothing wrong with that just something just a little detail to take note of because m sport cars right this strip here is not chrome it's black and uh, apparently the official uh, name for this would be in if, if you see this in black it is called shadow line trim okay now let's open the door um so the e39's door you notice this hooks okay it's present here in the front door and the rear door as well. So these hooks here are not for show. They serve as a catch really. In the event of a side impact, these hooks catch the door to prevent the door from crumpling into the car. So uh, it protects the occupants uh, in the event of a side impact. And you notice also that these red stickers there they provide extra reflectivity in case uh when you stop the car by the roadside you open it at open the door by uh at night uh another car passing by would notice this uh red sticker here and be alerted to an opening door so this is a very simple yet very effective touch to the car and uh, something that i learned although thankfully i've not found that found it on my car i learned that uh, throughout the world, wherever you are, it is a common problem that the rear doors of the E39 leak water. Okay? It is apparently a very, very common problem. Uh, no apparent cause has been found for this. It just happens uh, in cars. Actually, speaking of which, uh, <laughs> I just noticed this drip 
drops of water here, right? And uh, there is actually, well, definitely water leaking through from here. Well, it doesn't seem to be a problem, so just gonna leave it at that. Not gonna open things in this car unnecessarily. Let's step inside the car. Automatic versions of the E39 come with five speed transmissions, most of them, anyways. Uh, the E39 was one of the first models to offer Steptronic. And here with my car, okay. Now the first initial batches of the of this of the Steptronic gear lever, right, had the minus here and the plus here, and later batches, the final, I think it was in 2001 onwards, BMW converted it to the more to the more uh, currently more popular reverse selection okay where you have upshift back and uh downshift front which is a natural reaction really because right when you think of it uh, okay when you accelerate you upshift ma right so when you upshift you will pull 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 to upshift the gears and then when you downshift usually when you want is when you brake you step on the brakes you brace and then you push to downshift all right now somebody asked me uh about these three rows of switches uh, which I did not explain in my earlier video. So PDC here is for, stands for Park Distance Control. Basically, it means the parking sensors, the front and rear parking sensors, right? So my E39 has front and rear parking sensors, but, uh, well, they don't work. And apparently, uh, when you press this, when you activate PDC, if you see these blinking lights followed with accompanied by a loud beep, it shows that the PDC is actually not working. There is a malfunction. Then this button here is the rear sun shades. So I'll press this and show its operation. Yeah, still works. Press it again to lower it. Yeah, well, it's a 15 euro mechanism. There are bound to be some hiccups. It's working as well as can be expected. And lastly here, we have this button ASC. ASC stands for Automatic Stability Control. Uh, apparently with the E39, some, some units have ASC. Others have what they call DSC. DSC is Dynamic Stability Control. Now, many uh, online sources, okay, they explain the difference between ASC and DSC as ASC operates on the rear wheels, whereas DSC operates on all four wheels. ASC uh, functions to retard engine torque if it detects slippage, whereas DSC has the, has, does that incorporates the functions of ASC and on top of it applies brakes individually on all four wheels. To me, it sounds like ASC here means traction control. DSC means the full suite electronic stability control. Now, in my previous video, I also showed that this recirculating but button here is not working. But thankfully, I found that I don't need to bother with this button anymore because on the steering wheel, this actually serves to trigger the recirculating mode. So I'm just showing you, here's the recirculating button, right? So I'll press this. Yep. So this button here serves to toggle the recirculating function in the car. Now, uh, as I explained earlier, this cluster of buttons are for the cruise control. This cluster of buttons are for the audio control. This is actually for the built-in telephone, which this car actually, it, it either did not came with this car or it has stopped working either way. Well, uh, so let's come here. So here we have uh, the trip computer, right? So pressing this actually activates audio, which I will deactivate. This is, this is, this is for the telephone control, which as I said, not available in this car. And uh, so this activates your time, okay? And uh, this car actually has a stopwatch. So this triggers the stopwatch function. You set this to start the clock, stop, reset, yeah. Now this memo off feature, what it does is, you see this icon here? This will trigger a, a beep, okay? Every time when your clock, is go when you are let's say right now is is uh now we now we just pass six lah okay but let's say later when when we reach seven o'clock 15 seconds before seven o'clock the car will sound a beep to warn you that okay the time now is turning to to seven o'clock okay and then later eight 15 seconds before eight o'clock it will sound another beep so basically this function it serves to to alert you of the part to the passing of time
right? Then you have BC here activates all the trip computer functions. You have two average fuel consumption uh, readings, all right? Yeah, very heavy fuel consumption, I know. So uh, range. All right, so right now, this, these are the features. So this distance, let's say right now you're going somewhere uh, one kilometer from where you are now. Okay, you set or, or whatever lah. You have set. You just set your distance here. Okay, and what happens is that so the car will then count down the distance left to your destination. Not only that, it will give you an estimated time of arrival uh, based on I believe your maybe your average speed. So this average speed, of course, is calculated based on your usage, and I believe it also includes stopping time, which is why my uh, my average speed is this low. So you can also set a speed limit. Okay, what this limit does is it doesn't limit you from going past that speed, but what it will do is it will what you call it. It will sound a warning to tell that hey, you have exceeded this speed. Slow down. I'm just going to drive off a bit. Okay, and uh, we are going to try out really the arrival, sort of like, you know, that, that function that calculates your, what you call it, your, your distance versus average speed. So right now I am just driving off and also I'm going to try out the speed limit function. Right now I'm cruising at 30 kilometers per hour. There, it sounded a limit. I've passed 40 kilometers per hour. Again, okay. But it is just that one beep, so it is not. Uh, it is not the annoying kind of of uh, of reminder. So I've just covered one kilometer, and well, there was no fanfare. But what has happened is that the arrival indicate. Uh, arrival indicator on the trip computer it has just went to dash so it what it means is that I've already reached my destination so to deactivate the speed limit feature I press this text is no longer there it means that the speed limit warning system is disabled okay guys so here's another cool feature of the e39 so let's say like you are parked you've parked your car uh, out on a sunny place in a sunny day you want the car to cool down before you enter right so what you can do is okay this timer feature here enables you uh, to tell the car by what time to pre-activate the in-car ventilation system so the time now is 6 15. i'm gonna set uh this to 6 16. okay la, 6 17 la. Set this so you see this red light here, right? And what I'm going to do right now, I am going to turn off the engine, I'll lock the car, and I'm going to wait. Yep, so you see that that just came on, and I'm going to put the microphone here next to the, the blower. And so, and see this. The, the blower is actually blowing air oh, brilliant and uh, of course it actually goes on for half an hour but I can off this and get back in to start the car okay so uh, there are two grades of instrument clusters in the E39 now this is a service indicator okay just before this goes off so when I see all green bars it shows that this car has just been serviced it doesn't need a service anymore and also this this display here is condition based so uh, if your car is under severe usage the the green bars will fade faster and then it will sh to tell you that hey it's time to service your car okay so uh, there are two grades of instrument cluster. I'm told this is the more advanced version. There's another version, all right, that that has the graphic display of the car from top view, and that will that illustrates you, okay, door open, boot open, uh, lights not working, and all that. So it actually has indicator lights to show, hey, this this light, this headlight or this tail light is uh, is spoiled. Okay, this one does not. But what this one has. <laughs> is that you can press this button here 
When you see check control OK, it means that the car's onboard diagnostics have no internal uh, errors whatsoever. Okay, and so in this one, right, let's say like, for example, you, you notice that there is no door open uh, warning light, okay? Not because BMW skimmed on it, but check this out. So right now, I open my door, okay? I don't close it properly. I drive off, ah. Uh. So right now, I'm in a parking lot just, just to assure everybody that this is done in a controlled environment. And uh, so now I move off. You can see it warns there, door open okay uh, so just to flash you the owner's handbook so the the other version of the instrument cluster has this display that they actually warns you okay the doors are open or the the windshield washer needs to be topped up or the headlights are not working tail lights are not working this one does not this one just flashes everything through text display as I showed earlier so for a 15 year old car the E39 is actually astonishingly sophisticated um, I even in this short period of ownership I've discovered you know such so many things about this car and I thought I knew a lot about it but actually I don't you know even though I've read up a lot about this car before buying it right after buying it there there actually it actually still had quite a few surprises that I did not anticipate yes uh, it lacks on some of the more modern features that I have grown you know accustomed to like having keyless entry having reverse camera the e39 does not offer that but then again it also offered me a few things that I never expect I would find a car in a car at this age. So um, I would say this car, even you know, the basic design is more than two decades old. Even that, this is an astonishingly well designed and well engineered car by BMW. So all I can say right now is stay tuned for more. There will be more videos of this car coming up on this channel uh, in the coming months and even years as I continue on my journey of ownership with this car. sensors spoiled that's why all right guys hope you enjoyed today's video if you like my content click on the subscribe button uh, press the bell icon to toggle the frequency of updates every time I upload a new video and uh, don't forget also to check out the channels of Bobby Bing and Fadil okay of the horizon team and until my next video thanks for watching bye for now